Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at three different scientists and their contributions to our current understanding of what causes disease. We're going to look at the previous understanding of disease being spontaneous generation, then look at Francesco Reddy, Louis Pasteur and Robert, I'm going to say throughout this video, Koch. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those ones that's pronounced like Koch or something like that. Um, it's too hard for me. I'm just going to go with Koch and Koch's postulates. So first up, spontaneous generation. Pretty much until these guys came along, the prevailing theory was that living organisms just magic themselves out of nothing. Uh, so we had organic matter, or living matter rather, coming from non-living matter. So for example, fleas magicked out of dust, maggots magicked out of rotten meat, and rats magicked out of grain. This kind of made sense at the time. If you left a bag of grain uh, out in your kitchen or in the shed uh, for a period of time, eventually you'd come out and there'd be rats in it. So obviously the grain is turning into rats. Uh, we now know this isn't true, but what are you going to do? Uh, even when they discovered bacteria uh, in the 17th century, they thought that the bacteria had generated spontaneously from the water. So they just added this to the spontaneous generation theory rather than looked into it any further. Until Francesco Reddy came along. Now in 1668 he conducted an experiment which disproved this prevailing theory of spontaneous generation. Unfortunately, nobody actually listened to him. Uh, so what he did is he got three jars. In one jar he had some meat, uh, well actually in all the jars he had some meat, but in the first it was just a jar with meat and no lid on it. In the second jar he put a cork on the lid, uh, as a lid rather, and in the third jar, he put a piece of very thin material across on the lid. And what he noticed, that was in the first jar, flies could get to down to the rotten meat, or as it rotted, uh, and that they couldn't get into either of the other two jars, either the cork or the one that had the material over the top of it. And of once he left it, he found that maggots only formed in the one that was exposed to the air and the flies. Uh, the one that was closed didn't get maggots, and the one that was exposed to just the air didn't get maggots. Uh, so therefore he concluded that that must be the flies doing something to the meat to cause the maggots to appear out of that rotting flesh. Uh, as I said, this uh, is something that nobody really listened to. We're talking the 17th century here, and it wasn't until Louis Pasteur came along and discovered that most diseases are caused by microorganisms. Um, and these are what we call germs, remembering that not all microorganisms cause disease and not all things that cause disease are microorganisms, although most are. Uh, and in particular, he was employed to look at the spoiling of wine. So what would happen is that for some reason, some wine, when left in a bottle, over a period of time would spoil, while others would not spoil. Uh, and he found that that spoiled wine actually had bacteria in it that was causing it to spoil. And invented a process which is now known as pasteurization, named after him, where they stop this from happening uh, through heating up whatever it is to a certain temperature which kills the bacteria in it but doesn't affect the taste of uh, whatever it is, wine, milk, etc. The other big thing that Louis Pasteur did was disprove definitively uh, the theory of spontaneous generation. And what he did is he used what was called a swan-necked flask. So it's a flask that has this bendy shaped neck. And he got a few of these different flasks and put a nutrient broth in them. Uh, the first one he put his nutrient broth in and did nothing more and he found that it started to get manky as things grew in it and he could put those things under the microscope. Uh, the next one he got a, his swan neck flask with the broth in it and he boiled it and what he found that as he boiled it it actually uh, the steam from the boiling condensed in the neck causing an airlock and if that was left in place that airlock would protect the broth from then spoiling. However uh, in the third swan necked flask he boiled it and then broke the neck off 
and this meant that there wasn't that airlock there with the water uh, and it was exposed to the air and he found growth in that flask. So he concluded that there is something originally in the broth that can uh, cause the growth. However, by heating whatever's in the broth, it kills it and that then needs to be re-exposed to the air in order for those microorganisms to grow. Now, Robert Koch came along similar time to uh, Louis Pasteur, and what he did is he worked out a way to grow cultures of bacteria on nutrient jelly. And this meant that these bacteria could be studied in a way that they could never have been studied before. Uh, because there weren't enough of them to actually study and he also from this developed a series of steps using these cultures uh, known as Koch's postulates which proved the causation of a disease by a microorganism. Now Koch's postulates, the first postulate is that the microorganism that you think is causing the disease needs to be present in every animal that has the disease. Okay, which, which makes sense. If it's going to cause the disease, it has to be there. The second step in this process is isolating that bacteria from the blood of the infected animal and growing it on a nutrient slide. Once you've grown this culture in the laboratory, you can then take microorganisms from that culture and infect a healthy animal. This healthy animal then needs to fall sick and have a sickness with the same symptoms as the sickness of the host. Finally, from this new diseased animal, you can then isolate the bacteria out of its blood. And when you look at it under a microscope, it has the same bacteria. And these proves that that particular bacteria causes the disease found in these animals. Using these postulates, he was able to prove and isolate the bacteria that caused some of the big diseases at the time, including anthrax, cholera, and tuberculosis, which allowed for further study of these bacteria. And he actually won a Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1905 for a test for tuberculosis that he created. And tuberculosis at the turn of the century was a big deal. About one in seven people was uh, affected by it. So developing an easy test for it uh, meant that they could then treat and prevent it. In this video, we've looked at spontaneous generation, the theory that living things magic themselves out of non-living things. For example, rats uh, appear out of bags of grain. We've looked at Francesco Reddy, who did an experiment with meat in different jars under different conditions. Uh, to show that spontaneous generation wasn't the case. Uh, however, he wasn't listened to. Lou Pasteur then came along and did a similar experiment uh, with swan, uh, broth in swan-necked flasks, uh, some with the neck broken off, some which he boiled and proved that uh, the growth is caused by the bacteria and the bacteria can be killed through boiling. Uh, Robert Koch then came along and came up with his postulates, which proved definitively whether a particular bacteria causes a particular disease. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.